Hey everyone, welcome to a Nari Fire tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at ways to control particles in a art directable way and introduction to wrangles um, to manipulate the P scale attributes and um, randomizing the color using tra trab functions. Okay, so say we've got a scene and we've got a box in the scene. So maybe you got some geometry or whatever here, something really fancy or not fancy, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but we want to have some particles in the environment, like kind of swirling around and doing some cool stuff, right? So first things first, uh, depending on the scene, you can use any geometry to control it. So I'm going to use a sphere in this case, just to demonstrate that it can be whatever. And we're going to name this our particles. Right, we're gonna come in here and we've got our sphere and we want this to be a polygon and I'm gonna set a transform um, beneath it so that we can basically control size and anywhere we want to have it on the scene right let me pull this up uh, pull it out and then hit P so that we can have our parameters beside us Okay, so for I'm gonna create a point, um, points from volume, <clears throat> and then this is gonna give me a bunch of points. Now, what the 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 idea here is for me to demonstrate like particles are points. We understand the geometry is built from geometry is composed of points, of edges, and primitives, right? That's what creates a piece of geometry, a primitive. I mean, not a primitive, a, a piece of geometry, right? Um, so particles are just points, just these little points. So when we see them in space like this, um, we're gonna, this is what we're gonna be controlling. So if we were to render this out, this would be just points in space, but we want them to move around and have some interesting things. So I'm going to jitter them and increase the jitter scale. So even if we were to just animate the jitter scale, that's going to give you some, you know, particle movement without even needing to use the pop solver. But of course, that's something that it's usually you're never gonna do that because the pop solver is still so simple to use. So we're gonna use a pop network, attach it here, and then we're gonna come in and we're gonna tell the pop source, right? This is where particles are coming in. We're gonna scatter the points onto all points. And then we're gonna come into our birth and control the birth. So we're gonna be changing this in a second. Why? I'll show you why because we're gonna use a pop force. And if we put the pop force in here and we activate the pop force's amplitude just a little bit, we're just gonna have particles like flowing around in space like, but every frame we're emitting particles. So we're gonna have a lot of particles. So what we wanna do is come here and do a dollar F, negative, dollar F is less than two. So what this is gonna do, actually, my bad. I always do that. What this does is that um, we're not emitting particles after frame two. So this can be whatever. This can be frame 10 and you'll emit particles for the first 10 frames. For the sake of this, we just wanna emit like particles in the first two frames. So we hit here, this is gonna give us a real time play so that's what it looks like real time. Just because the computer is able to calculate really fast. So here we're just going to reduce the, the amplitude to say one. And I'm going to use a pop drag just to get them moving even slower. Remember, this is just like environment particles just so that we can get something fun in, in the scene. Um, so so that's already gonna give us something kind of like nice if we were to have just you know just some environment particles i usually even do it you know you can do like a point 
point one or something just so that they move very very subtly Let's see okay so when we are gonna render the points hold the attributes so the points essentially hold the information of how big it is how much velocity it has um, what color they are they control the information of each of the particles so we can do a little hack which is a copy stamp and copy just whatever like spheres or boxes or anything in here so so that we can see the particles a little bit easier and then what this is going to allow us to do is it it, it will let me demonstrate um, the information that the points hold so right now if we hit middle click we know we have the we, we have 12 attributes onto the points so i'm gonna do an attribute create actually i've actually uh attribute randomize to show when i create an attribute called p scale which is the scale of our particles and i'm randomizing it from zero to one so now we've got particles that are super super tiny and we can increase this see that and we've got particles that are much larger so now I'm, I'm just allowing the template point attributes to go through so that we can see that I'm randomizing the, the CD here the color okay so that's kind of like base like you could potentially render that like of course you're not gonna render it out with geometry we would render this out as particles um, and i can do a tutorial later on um, how to render particles with redshift if anyone wants to please leave a comment if you if you guys want to check that out but i'm gonna teach you guys how to control this using wrangles because that's the power of houdini really like understanding the way that wrangles work um that's what's really going to help you guys um, squeeze the most out of the software. So let's come in here and hit Y and just get rid of that. And then we're going to hit Wrangle. And we're going to put our Wrangle right here. Right, so we don't have anything going on right now. But what I want to do is I'm going to randomize everything using a P scale. So I'm going to do float, add P scale. And then we want to do at p scale is equal to rand at pt num parenthesis and semicolon boom and that's gonna that's giving us the same result but we can't really control right now what is you know the the range between the zero and one so what we want to do is create a fit range okay so what our fit range is doing is say for example we've got the particles that are ranging from let me pull up the geometry spreadsheet uh the p scale so we have ranges that go from like a 0.4 to to 0.23 but it's like the the thought here is that we can't really control from a range of a zero to a one easily so that our particles um, aren't going all the way down to a full zero because if they go to a zero that means that the particles are going to be invisible right so so that's something that we've got here we've got the minimum and maximum value but I don't have it right now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this into something else so so let's do at p scale is equal to fit zero one and then we can do rand at pt num and then we have to put in the range. So we want to do a 0.3 comma to how big to probably like a one. 
semicolon and do that. So you can see now we've got our smallest particles. For example, if we do like a five, our smallest particles aren't that small anymore. Okay, so the fit from zero to a one, right? And then we have a point one to a one. So we can do a point one to an eight or whatever. So that's going to show up here as in our P scale, it's always going to be from like, from these values. So the biggest one, to the smallest one, 0 0.1, 0 0.79. See, so if I change this to a nine, 0.89, okay? So that's a way of controlling the scale. Now say, oh, I wanna control the the height, like the scale. And then we're gonna just copy the same thing that we did here and play, paste it here. But we're gonna say scale, dot y so right now you can see that it's working i'm controlling the height of the p scale so let's do like a one so as you can see now my particles are being randomly controlled on their x on their y axis and we can do this for the x axis or you know whatever one that we want so this is how you can randomize um the scale vector attribute for x y and z right okay so the next thing that i want to show you is i'm just commenting it out i'm gonna create another wrangle and i'm gonna show you um how to control um the scale the 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 color my bad so we're gonna come in and select the uh, we're gonna come into our color and we're gonna do add CD is equal to tramp and then se semicolon and when we can call this anything like um, banana or or chalk chocolate okay and then we're gonna randomize it between our PT num. Um, we're gonna give it a random value, and then what we need we need to hit this right here. And I'm missing a semicolon. So right now we have um, channel ramp, and then the chocolate is right here, which is um, basically what like the the fact that i'm putting the semicolon and i'm using the channel ramp and i hit this it brings it up in my parameters so right now i'm con controlling it but it's default to just blacks and it's not it's not controlling my color so what it can do is a if you come here and you say edit parameter interface we come to our chocolate and we change this from a ramp float to a color hit apply except and then we can come here and select, you know, whatever colors we want. All right. So this has been an introduction to controlling your P scale attribute, your scale attribute, um, how to control uh, your color and creating a channel ramp um, so that we can um, edit our parameter interface and change from float to color values for easily controlling the color of our particles all right uh, feel free to leave any comments or if you guys want to see something specific and um, we'll be back with more